We have covered the topic of the Heavy Fighter before, and its unique place in history as a microcosm of the doctrine, technology, and common beliefs held during the interwar period. But rarely does a heavy fighter as prestigious as the one we are to cover have the beginning of never having intended to be a heavy fighter in the first place. Before there was the Bristol Bow Fighter, there was the Beaufort, and the Beaufort was not a heavy fighter, nor ever dreamed of becoming one. Beaufort was a twin-engine coastal patrol torpedo bomber developed for Air Ministry specification MI-5 and G-24 in 1935 for a land-based twin-engine torpedo and reconnaissance aircraft. First flying in 1938 with introduction the next year, Beaufort was a medium bomber akin in many ways to the Douglas A-20 Havoc, with its well-rounded flight characteristics. Successful in its intended role, it found a welcomed place in the rosters of RAF Coastal Command, the Fleet Air Arm, and notably the Royal Australian Air Force, who produced 700 examples locally under license, in addition to the 1,121 examples created in Britain. During the Munich Crisis, as the RAF was taking stock of their aircraft inventory, it was noted that though the majority of their roles were filled by able designs, the role of a twin-engined, long-range fighter was currently unfulfilled. Bristol realized this urgent need and turned to their successful Beaufort for evaluating the possibility of its conversion into the role, a possibility that was met with glowing remarks from the evaluation given the plane's strength and ability to handle rough fighter maneuvers. To make the Beaufort into a fighter, the conversion included replacing the old pair of Taurus engines with more powerful Bristol Hercules, generating 1,000 extra horsepower altogether. Facilitating these changes included moving the engine nacelles to be center of the wing rather than under slung like in the Beaufort, as the Herculeses used a larger propeller and thus needed more ground clearance. This prototype was then dubbed Type 156, named Bowfighter, and proposed to the Air Ministry who drafted specification F-1137 in response, suggesting the Bowfighter be used as an interim until the Westland Whirlwind, another twin-engine fighter under development, was ready to go. A year later, in 1938, Bristol was given the green light to begin earnest development on the Bowfighter. After many trials and tribulations of adapting the Beaufort into a proper fighter, involving adjusting the fuselage to be slummer, refining the engine mounts to easily swap engines in and out, among numerous other alterations, the unarmed prototype R2052 first flew on July 17, 1939. Though succeeding in making the Beaufort into a fighter plane, it was disappointing to the Ministry as its top speed was only marginally faster than the old Beaufort, and only barely competitive with contemporary heavy fighters. There was a brief attempt to swap the Hercules out for Merlins, but that exacerbated the problem and also made it difficult to land and take off with. By this time in development, however, the Westland Whirlwind had been cancelled due to problems with its own engines, leaving Beaufort as the only heavy fighter in inventory for the RAF. One advantage the Bowfighter enjoyed over the Whirlwind, however, was the planned addition of airborne intercept radar, something which the Whirlwind would have lacked. Entering operational service in September 1940, it would see action during the Battle of Britain as an interceptor and night fighter, even as a shortage of radar sets caused many of the first deliveries to arrive without their night fighting equipment. Even without radars, however, Bowfighters performed well, scoring their first victory against a Dornier Doe 17 in October of 1940, then their first radar kill in November against a Yonkers Ju-88. With mounting successes, both fighters would slowly be folded into performing other roles beyond night fighter duties and heavy fighter interception, with one example being their service with RAF Coastal Command as a counter to the Condor raids preying upon Allied anti-submarine efforts. They ironically would also perform anti-shipping duties themselves, as they retained the torpedo mounting from the Beaufort. They also would serve close air support during the Western Desert Campaign, as their carrying capacity allowed the use of general-purpose bombs and rockets with minimal modification. Their service was not Europe-exclusive either. Both fighters on the Australian and Commonwealth hands would operate against the Japanese in the Pacific Front, with the Australians in particular loving the Bowfighter after its service in the Battle of the Bismarck Sea. Bowfighters would stick around after the war for quite a while, engaging in the Greek Civil War in 1944 with RAF squadrons before being withdrawn in 1946, only to then be put back into action during the Malaysian Emergency in 1948, where they operated until 1949, by which point they were replaced by the Bristol Brigand in RAF service. Portugal, Turkey, and the Dominican Republic would use Bowfighters briefly, alongside Israel who purchased a handful in 1948. A good majority of Bowfighters, however, would find use as target tugs until 1960, when they were finally retired for good. Thanks to their fairly long service post-war, a few survivors exist today of the 5,928 examples built over their course of production, with six on display between Australia, the United Kingdom, and the USA, and a further three being stored in museums not for display or under restoration. 
Sadly, no flying examples exist, there are, there are five known wrecks of varying condition around the world, some of which are popular tourist attractions or diving locations.